Hey guys, it's Austin. I'm going to do another video here on Lake the Ozarks. This is going to be all about the spawn and bass fishing. So I'm going to kind of break down the lake, everything I look for with the spawn, uh, and hopefully help you catch some big fish. I'm going to break the lake down again, kind of in some other sections, but first I want to talk about some very important factors uh, that's going to kind of help you understand why different parts of the lake can fish differently during the spawn. From a biological standpoint, the eggs that a bass releases need to maintain a certain temperature and they also need a certain amount of sunlight in order for them to hatch. So that is going to kind of dictate on different areas of the lake how deep they can spawn and when it will happen. So I'll use up the river here as an example first, kind of what I'm talking about. So you get a lot of water coming through Truman Dam in the springtime, keeps it pretty muddy up here. Let's just say you have water visibility that is roughly a foot, foot and a half. That is going to limit how deep these fish can spawn. Now they can't lay their eggs in four or five foot of water. If you only have like a foot or so of visibility, there's probably not going to be enough light penetration to get down there for the eggs to hatch. So the fish are going to be, you know, forced to be pushing up on the bank to lay their eggs. And that's going to kind of let you know the area that you're going to be working with and can help eliminate a little bit of the uh, deeper beds and things like that. Now, if you go to the lower end of the lake, let's just say you have three foot or maybe even four foot of water visibility, you know, these fish are going to be able to lay their eggs in probably six foot of water, maybe even a little bit deeper. Just, you know, it varies on actual water clarity and it just needs to have enough light penetration in order for the eggs to hatch. Now, water temperature also comes into play with this. You know that shallower, uh, muddy water is going to warm up faster than shallower, clear water. So generally the western portion of the lake up the river, the spawn kind of starts up here and it seems like it kind of trickles its way down through different portions of the lake and like the last area that's going to have the, the big wave of spawners coming up is generally uh, the lower end and up into the gravel way a little bit. So that's just something to think about and hopefully that helps you understand how, you know, water clarity, light penetration, things like that is really important during the spawn and can help limit uh, the areas that you need to be looking into. All right, now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to go into what is actually getting the spawn moving on and things I start to look for and how I go about it. So your two biggest factors that kind of get things going is water temperature and length of day. I know I talked about this in my pre-spawn video, uh, and I think length of day is the most important aspect in this until it actually comes time to laying the eggs. All of nature kind of has like a biological clock, uh, the length of day, is something that is a signal to them like, hey, it's time for us to start spawning or start thinking about spawning and we need to start you know, migrating towards the backs of the coves and creeks and get ready for the spawn. So if the water temperature is a little bit lower than it was you know, in years past or for the time of the year, maybe it's a little bit behind, it seems like the fish are still wanting to push up and, and, and heading to the back of the creeks because the length of day is kind of signaling that to them. But as soon as the water temperature, you know, gets to a certain point, it seems like everything moves really fast and the fish just all of a sudden are, you know, boom. You see a bunch of fish back in the flats or they're really close in to like the last secondary points, things like this. Last area of deep water closer to uh, the spawning flats. So I think the length of day is the most important, but water temperature is obviously going to be a key factor when it comes to the actual spawn. So besides photo period, the next most important thing for the spawn is your water temperature. So you have to maintain a specific water temperature for the eggs to hatch. If it drops too low, uh, they're not going to hatch and it's too warm. It's the same concept. So there's a, a range and a window that it needs to be in order for the eggs to hatch. So the smallmouth, uh, they can spawn a little bit sooner. A lot of times they say around like 55 degrees. And then the largemouth, a good rule of thumb is around 60 degrees and the same with the spotted bass. Um, I don't get too caught up on looking for a precise water temperature, but just know that if you're in the main gut of a pocket or something and you start to see water in the upper 50s, if you start to head back into the shallow um, flat areas that you think the fish are going to be spawning in, you'll oftentimes find water a few degrees warmer in the low 60s, say, and that's when you're gonna start seeing beds pop up. And the males are gonna be the first ones that come up and make the beds, and then the females will soon be following. So that's kind of my rule of thumb with the water temperature. Like I said, I don't get too caught up on looking for a specific number, but just know that there is a range that it has to take place in. So make sure you start checking in the shallows maybe a little bit sooner than you think, because oftentimes, you will prolong it and then by the time you start looking in the shallows you might start missing the first wave of fish that pull up. Next thing you're going to be looking for are nice flat 
protected areas, things that aren't going to have too much wave action, too much current, and you also want them to have a lot of sunlight. I talked about this in my pre-spawn video. Uh, I'm, I'm generally going to start in pockets like this that are facing the south. They're going to get the most sunlight this time of the year on them, and that can make a big difference in the shallow water. I don't know if it's so much of a big deal, you know, out in the main lake portions or out in the deeper secondary point water and stuff like that, but when you are talking about shallow water that fish are going to be spawning in, I think it does have a significant impact and uh, these are the areas you're going to look in first, you know, as opposed to something over here that's not going to get quite as much sunlight throughout the day. So within that, you're looking for these um, flat little pockets, little areas like this. You want docks, laydowns, things like that. Additional cover is great. Um, you know, they're all over. All throughout all these coves, there are a ton of areas, you know, these fish can pull up into and spawn. So something else that you need to be looking for is the correct bottom composition. You want something that is a hard bottom for these fish to spawn on. Uh, if you have like a really soft mud bottom, they're probably not going to spawn there unless that's their absolute last resort because that is a good opportunity for their eggs to get silted over and then they're not going to hatch. So I'm generally looking for pea gravel. There's pea gravel all over uh, Lake the Ozarks and other lakes in the Ozarks region, but it doesn't have to be pea gravel. It can be a little bit bigger rock, but it seems like they prefer the smaller pea gravel. I don't know if it's easier to just kind of fan out and make a bed or what, but that seems to be what they really prefer. My favorite thing to look for the pea gravel is, as opposed to just, you know, looking on Navionics, you can tell there's a ton of shallow pockets and things like that, um, is pull up Google Earth Pro. So this is the version you have to download. Um, if you go to this little clock up here, let's just say this is the most current picture of Lake the Ozarks. This was the same pocket um, I was in. But you can go back a time here. It is March of 2012 is I think the best one that I found. But you can zoom in here. This is when the lake is low. And you can really kind of start to see the bottom and see the rocks and uh, the type of composition. So you can see that it's pretty fine rock through here uh, all around. And, you know, these would be great areas to spawn. And you're getting plenty of sunlight on there. So these are, you know, places that I would check. Where if you zoom in here, it looks like there's maybe quite a bit more mud on this side. So, you know, I would be checking on the inside of these docks or over here maybe to see if you can find any pea gravel or any harder bottom any type of transition, you know, just areas that you can really pinpoint. So this is something that's great to do while you're at your house. Um, you can cut down on a ton of time idling in and out of these pockets, trying to find pea gravel and things like that. All right, I'll move down to mid lake and I'll talk about the actual spawn itself. So you have fish that were hanging out in the main lake in the winter or on secondary points, you know, closer to deeper water and they're starting to push their way in. So there's tons of areas that these fish can pull up into and spawn. But um, we'll just use this kind of as an example back here. So you have this secondary point with a little bit deeper water, nice little channel bank looks like here, and it leads up into the shallow flats. So the, what's gonna happen first are the males are going to push up into the shallow water and they're going to make beds. They're gonna find something as suitable uh, as far as bottom hardness and they're going to start making the bed. And the females, uh, I like to say that they're lurking out in the depths a little bit. They're not gonna be right up in that shallow water the whole time the male's making the bed. They're gonna be probably on this channel bank or they could be uh, hiding out underneath these docks. There's a brush pile or something, secondary point, whatever. They're just gonna be hanging out uh, kind of just on standby in a little bit deeper water until the water temperature is right and everything is right. And then the females are gonna push up uh, to the males that have already made their beds and they're going to you know, hang out maybe a little bit before the spawning ritual starts, not too long and then they're actually going to spawn. They're gonna lay the eggs, the males are gonna fertilize the eggs, and the females can either go to another bed and lay more eggs, or they can pull out to a little bit deeper water and then maybe come back later and lay more eggs, or they can just lay their eggs and then, you know, that's it. They're only gonna lay one round of eggs. It, it kind of depends. Nature's way, I think, of kind of uh, trying to make sure that if something happens like a big cold front or something that there's still going to be eggs to be laid that can help produce a hatch. Once the female leaves, I feel like they're kind of in a funk for a little while, wherever they go suspend, hang out. You know, spawning takes a lot of energy for them. So it seems like they just don't eat as well for a period of time. And then after that, they start to really feed up heavily to start to regain their energy. So as far as the male, they're gonna be sitting on the bed 
guarding the eggs. Um, the eggs can take a few days to hatch. Once the eggs hatch, uh, they turn into what they call fry. And then the male is going to stand guard on the fry for a period of time, maybe up to a week. And then the male is eventually going to leave the fry and the nest, and that's all that's left. And the male kind of going to do the same thing. It seems like they go out to a little bit deeper water. Um, they also exerted a lot of energy throughout the spawn, spending a lot of time guarding the nest and guarding the fry. So um, I feel like, you know, it's kind of an iffy bite on some of those fish sometimes, but, but they are eventually uh, going to start feeding very heavily to try and regain all the energy that they expended during the spawn. Another thing I want to talk about is kind of waves of fish during the spawn. So not only can different sections of the lake, you know, be spawning at different times based on your water temperature, uh, such as the river, you know, spawning generally first before the lower end, but uh, actually fish moving into the same areas in different cycles, basically. So I'll go down here to Nangua, somewhere I haven't been yet, and kind of find something to use as a quick example. So we'll use this here. All right, so say we've got fish that are staged up here on the secondary point, um, and they're getting ready to slide in to spawn. Well, there might also be fish out here in the main lake point that are going to slide in here and spawn. And through that, you know, you can have different cycles of fish. Maybe some fish out here are, are ready to push up in here and spawn or here and ready to move up. But there might be another fish out there that is not quite ready yet. So say the first wave of fish moves up, they spawn, do their business, and then they leave. Maybe a week later, um, another wave of fish kind of starts to move up or, or a couple days. It can kind of vary. It depends a little bit on the weather and things like that. But you know, you just have to realize that all the fish are not going to be spawning at the exact same time. If you start to see some fish moving up, that doesn't mean that, you know, that's all the fish that are going to be spawning. Generally you seem to think that the bigger fish tend to spawn first. That's just my personal opinion. So it seems like if you get to the spawning area early or a little bit sooner and like you're waiting for those fish to push up, I think that's your best bet to catch a really uh, big one right before the spawn. And then I think it's kind of the same thing whenever they start to work their way back out. I think the big ones go up, spawn, and then they kind of get get lost. They go back out to the deeper water. They seem like they don't hang around too much in the shallow waters. But I think that's kind of, again, nature's way of spreading things out, making sure, you know, if there's a ma massive cold front or something that would disrupt the spawn, that there's still going to be more waves of fish moving up to spawn. And again, um, the fish, you know, they're not going to lay all their eggs generally at one time. They may lay them once and then a few days later lay the rest or they may lay some and then come back again even a week later. And there's studies on that and things like that. So a little bit of that is uh, theories and you know maybe what you personally believe they do. I feel like I need to mention the moon in this video. I know there's a lot of people who have strong beliefs uh, on its effect of the spawn, but I honestly haven't taken good enough notes over the years to know if it has really affected me. And I don't get to choose when I fish really. I'm just gonna fish at any opportunity that I have. So I'm not going to get all hung up on the moon phase and say, well, I'm not going because it's not a full moon or something like that. So I don't really let it affect me too much. But from the scientific studies that I've read and looked into, uh, they basically all have the same general consensus that there may be a correlation between the full moon and the spawn. And they basically say that three days before a full moon and three days after the full moon is the best window to have males pushing up on the beds. And they basically are saying that maybe the extra light from the full moon is what's allowing them to see better at night and basically defend the bed or the fry from predators a little bit easier because they have a little bit extra light to see. So that's basically what they come up with. Um, take that for what it's worth. Or maybe you have better notes than I do over the years and you can shed some light on that. Final thing I want to talk about, I'll go into the glaze for this just as an example, is additional cover. So, um, you know, you're looking for flatter banks, you're looking for flatter pockets and stuff like that for these fish to spawn on with the pea gravel and hard bottom, things like that. But also things like dock walkways, um, lay downs, maybe like a piece of concrete that's sitting in the water that used to have uh, cables attached to it for like an anchor. Those are all things that the bass can spawn around. Anything that can give them uh, like an additional source of cover 
is something that they're usually going to seek out. So, you know, really even just behind walkways and things like this are very popular. If you spend time on your trolling motor and you really kind of dissect these docks and go up behind them and, and um, you know, really take the time to pick them apart, you will find a lot of fish on beds up behind here. So don't always, you know, think that it has to be just some perfect pea gravel bank, you know, whatever you have made up in your mind of what a spawning area should look like. Just start to cruise around and, and look for additional cover and you will find a lot of fish underneath these docks and things like that. All right, now that I've talked about the lake, kind of broke that down a little bit, I'm gonna go over the baits. Bernie, he really wants to be in this video. He gets excited when I start getting lures and things like that out and thinks we're going fishing, so we'll let him be a part of the video. Um, I'll kind of break this down into two little sections. So the first section is gonna be like, you're looking for the females that are not on beds yet or they're just on the outskirts in a little bit deeper water, so kind of more of a search bait, or even looking for males that haven't quite pushed up, but you know they're close by. And then the next portion is gonna be the fish that are actually on beds, um, and you're trying to catch them off beds. Excuse me, Burn. So, um, start with a search bait. You can still use a jerk bait. Still works really well. Um, this is a Vision 110, the LG Bone color. I like this color a lot. Um, still just a good search bait throwing around the secondary points or those little uh, deeper water areas leading into the spawning pockets you know when you're real close to it. Another bait that's real good is a rock crawler. You can throw this in the same type of banks you know your rock transitions into the pea gravel things like that. Square bills are good if you have lay downs things like that that are back in the water um, in the shallowers you're really close to where they're gonna spawn you know banging a square bill off the uh, lay downs or things like that. You can trigger a lot of bites. Then you can't forget the old classic spinner bait. Ryan had a whole video about spinner baits. Check that out. Um, this is just a great bait you can throw shallow and work it out. Catch really big fish on spinner bait this time of the year. Uh, as far as actual bed fishing goes, I'm mostly going to transition to plastics. So here's an example. This is a Berkeley chigger crawl just on a jig head. So I'm gonna start throwing a lot more plastics like that, um, kind of up and around the bed or really close to a bed. Like if you see a male on a bed and you're close to say a dock corner, but you don't see a female, I may be pitching it around the dock uh, in the slip and stuff like that, looking for that big female in there that's hopefully lurking around. Another one is a zoom brush hog. I really love this bait, super versatile. You can throw it on the beds and catch them off of it like that. You can pitch it around dock corners. You can dip the tails in some chartreuse and it kind of gives it a, more of a look of a bluegill when you're pitching through the dock stalls and stuff like that. Um, as far as actually catching them off the bed, uh, color usually seems like it doesn't matter all that much. Just something in their bed is enough to usually, not necessarily them eat it, but they will just like pick it up and move it off the bed. So um, that's usually a white or something that you can see very easy. And sometimes the females, you know, if they're on the bed or getting ready to spawn, they can be really finicky and they just won't bite anything almost. But uh, other times they'll bite really quick. But the males defending the bed, you can get them to bite very easily usually and get them off there. So that's another very versatile bait. Um, you can't forget the Senko, the stick bait, whatever you want to call it. Uh, green pumpkin, black and blue, classic colors, white. Some people throw pink, bubble gum, whatever. Um, just to help see the bait, that's a really good one to pick them off the bed. You can skip it underneath with a spinning rod and things like that and uh, catch fish doing that. Another bait that I think is overlooked is the tube. We love throwing the tube, especially uh, in northern waters for smallmouth, but it also works super well uh, here in the Ozarks for largemouth, spotted bass, and smallmouth. I know Ozarks doesn't have that many smallmouth. There are some in there, but it's mostly largemouth and Spotted bass, but the tube can pick it up very well. I prefer a green pumpkin or this uh, smoke color tube is generally what I'm going to throw almost all the time. And you can toss this up on a bed and just let it sit, and maybe give it a little rod shake, and oftentimes catch them off the bed with that. Another thing I do want to bring up is when the water, you know, gets to this mark, top water can start to become a big factor again. So throwing buzz baits, uh, spooks poppers, all great things. You can throw 
all of these over top uh, potential bedding areas nearby and oftentimes get really big bites on that. Um, sometimes the popper or the spook seems to be a little bit better than the buzz bait because you can kind of work these out and then stop them and then work them again and stop them. And it seems like just them staying in the strike zone a little bit longer so it can help trigger some bites. Um, there's just another example of a plastic that I like to throw. This is a missile D-bomb, just like a beaver style bait, basically. Nothing fancy, nothing new really. Uh, those work really well just to pitch around. Texas rig, can't forget about a shaky head too. I've caught a lot of fish on a shaky head. You can change up the size of worm, profile of worm. This is just a regular finesse style worm from Zoom. You can use more of a magnum style trick worm if you want to do something along those lines. But I generally stick with the smaller worm for now and then kind of upsize it later on through the year. Uh, one other search bait that I should have talked about earlier, but I didn't, and I'll bring it up now, is the old lipless crankbait. Hard to beat, too. Uh, generally keep it more of a crawdad pattern. Um, you can change to a shad pattern, too. That will work equally as well. But I generally start with the crawdad until the water gets mm, mid-60s, and then I'll kind of shy away from the crawdad pattern and go to the shad. Um, the infamous jig... This works 365 days a year, especially in the Ozarks. You can throw this anytime, combing around, flip docks, things like that, brush piles close to the spawning areas and catch fish on this for sure. Last but not least, I'll talk about one other little plastic I like in the springtime and that's a lizard. Lizards can come up, they can eat bass eggs and things like that. And that brings me to another good point that, um, you know, looking as a bluegill imitation or something like that, that is going to actively eat the eggs uh, or the fry of the bass. It's going to really trigger them to uh, eat that and get that away from the bed. So things like this, lizards, things that are actually, you know, look like they could pose a threat to the bass's bed is a really good bet. So hopefully these baits, uh, tips and things like that can help you catch a personal bass during the spawn. And maybe you'll even win like the big bass bash or something cool depending on the time frame of the bash and, you know, the cycle of the fish then. So thanks for watching and good luck out there.